Hello, welcome back to our diverse talk with Mark Omrod. And just to summarise on the first session of Mark, Mark shared with us about the incident that affected him in 2007, where he was, uh, he stood on an IED, blew, got blown up, he lost his uh, one arm and both legs, and uh, his journey from that, and it's been a fantastic sharing session. So now we're going to move on and learn a lot more about Mark. Um, now, so Mark, during that period of, uh, from when the incident actually happened to where you are today, but per particularly on the earlier stages, there would have been a lot of support for you. We mentioned about, um, you know, did you have any things that you just want to stop it, any feelings like that? But then what, what was the support network that pulled you through as well as your own personal mindset? You know, I'm very fortunate, and, and I always say this, you know, being a Royal Marine, we are very family-focused. You know, we've got the, the old mantra, once a Marine, always a Marine. We always look after our oppos and, and look out for each other. And pretty much from day one, you know, when I woke up in, in hospital in a, from the uh, drug-induced coma, everything was taken care of. You know, there was a, a welfare support officer at the hospital who had looked after my family, who had given them housing, who had looked after their food and to make sure, you know, they didn't suffer because they all had to take time off of work and that can have financial implications. But they were just looked after incredibly well, like from the offset, which meant that I didn't have to worry about any of that stuff. I was incredibly well looked after, you know, surrounded by a mixture of military and civilian doctors, surgeons, physios, you know, everything that I could ever want in this team around me who just ran around and made sure that the only focus that I had, the only stress that I had was recovery and, and getting better. I didn't have to worry about anything outside of that. And, and it was great. And that's what enabled me, I think, to progress so quickly. You know, Becky, my, my now wife, was phenomenal. All my family were great. The Royal Marines were great. The The team I had were great. And, you know, there's a lot to be said for that. If you get the right kind of people around you and the right kind of team around you, that's what enables you to go on and, and flourish. It's kind of like being a boxer, I think. You know, all the focus may be on the guy in the ring, but if it wasn't for the nutritionist, the strength and conditioning coach, the striking coach, the guys that hold the pads, and you know these guys wouldn't have the success that they have. And, and it's the same with me in recovery. I put a massive amount of it down to the, the team and the people that I had around me. And was there a particular doctor that said anything particularly to you? Not in a positive way. Um, you know, three and a half weeks into my recovery, I was lying in my hospital bed and you know not struggling mentally but go, you know going backwards and forwards with positivity negativity and trying to let the positivity reign supreme and this gentleman walked in and he he had been an amputation specialist in the UK for over 30 years and he told me that I had no chance of walking you know he said that if you if you were just missing one of your legs above the knee it's so difficult to use a prosthetic, they're so painful and they take so much energy that he had never met anybody in that 30 plus years who had success being independent of a wheelchair. And and then he just left me, you know. Now, normally I would have went out for a run or a walk or to clear my head to de-stress and process what someone who told me something like that had just said, but I was just stuck in a bed with nothing to do but think about it constantly. You know, and that kind of lit a fire in me too. You know, I, I managed to somehow turn that negative into a positive and use it as fuel to push me on. Yeah, and that's what drives you. And that, again, that links back to your commando mindset for sure. You know, when somebody tells you you can't be doing it, there's no I'm such word as you wrong. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's not, it's not in an arrogant way. It's not a like, you know, screw you, I'm going to prove you wrong. It's a like, well, you don't know me. You've met me for three minutes. You don't know what I'm about. You don't know my mindset. And, you know, in reality, that's just your opinion. It may be a very well-informed opinion. You may have a 30 plus years of experience in this field, but you don't know me. You don't know what I'm about. So, you know, that kind of got me fired up and, and lit that fire in my belly. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I remember in 2013, you actually made it over to Singapore and and I think everybody in Singapore on that particular occasion, the dinner we had over here and the speech you gave at that dinner 
was uh, they still talk about it today when I meet up with those folks. Oh wow! Yeah. They say, oh, yeah, that Mark Onward. Yeah, that was a fantastic night. That was a Christmas event as well, 2013. Yeah. Uh, 2000, yeah, 2013. So um, yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was it was great having you and Becky over here as well. So that brings us on to traveling. I mean, obviously people can't travel. Um, you, you're obviously a little bit restricted. That must be affecting you um, as well personally. Um, but how is this situation of the global pandemic that affected physically you and your business? Um, and the, you know, how, how, how has that affected what you're able to do now? You know, for, for me, it's all about pivoting. And again, you know, what I like in the military, improvise, adapt and overcome. Look at the situation that's in front of you. Don't focus on the negatives and, and what's bad about it. Figure out the ways to capitalize on the situation. So in terms of speaking, you know, I can no longer go on a stage in a, in a room full of people and do it, but I can do this. And I've managed to book paid speaking gigs that I've done virtually. Uh, I've got a couple more booked this year already. In terms of you know, other aspects of my business, it's given me more time to sit and be creative. So I now I'm, I'm very, very close to finishing my second book. I signed a film contract uh, 12 months ago, we were supposed to, just before lockdown, we were supposed to start filming the movie version of my book, but that's kind of been shelved for the minute. But we've still been able to do all the the boring, I call it behind the scenes stuff that the necessary stuff reaching out to people in the industry, you know, getting the script out there to people. So we've done a lot of that. And I've just kind of figured out ways to still be productive, proactive and, and efficient using technology. You know, and I think like a, a lot of people have, have done the same. And, you know, this this whole setup, you know, technology and what we've got available is, is a blessing. And we, we've got to jump on it and capitalize on it. Yeah, being adaptable and agile is, is key, um, like you mentioned, mm. and, and uh, that, that's absolutely fantastic. So um, with that, the um, I'm trying to think about the uh, effects of the, the, the traveling and how that has on you. You said you got you drive, you know, some people would think, well, how do you drive? You know, how do you get around? Um, but you've, you've managed to achieve all this. Um, Share a bit about the different tools and how you had to adapt those sort of uh, physical aspects of life. Yeah, so I'm not a big fan of adaptive equipment. Uh, I haven't been since the beginning. So like I said, June the 9th, 2009 was the last time I used a wheelchair. Uh, the house we live in, it, it was formerly a military married quarter. So when we moved in and I was serving, they put the, the grab rails in and, and all the adaptive equipment. We ripped all that out straight away when we bought the house uh my cars used to be adapted but because i'm a it, it was frustrating because if you're a, a double above knee or below knee amputee and you have two arms the adaption to drive a car was like 800 pounds but for me it was eighteen thousand pounds to adapt the car and that was every car that i had you know you had to get new adaptions every time you changed your car it meant you were restricted to one car and you could, you know, if it was off the road for whatever reason, you couldn't use it. If I went on a holiday with my family, I couldn't do any of the driving. So we figured out a way around it where I could drive using my prosthetics. Again, technology, I've got an app on my phone. It connects to my legs via Bluetooth. I can put it into driving mode, walking mode, cycling mode, gym mode, running mode, whatever mode I choose. That gives me that ability to you know, travel like we were, you were talking about all over the world. We went to Disneyland uh, back in, God, I think it was 2017. And yeah, it was my 10 year anniversary, 2017. I did all the driving in America using prosthetics on the wrong side of the road, um, safely taking my family around. So yeah, I mean, we just, we figure it all out as we go. We use expertise, knowledge, technology, and just try to live as independent a life as possible. You know, sometimes I do take advantage of my situation. I used to be very stubborn when I was flying. I think when I came up to you guys, I was in that mindset of, I'll join the normal queue with everyone else, go through security like everyone else. But now I'm like, I'm disabled. Can you fast track me, please? And I just cut through because I get so annoyed with the security system. So yeah, I just, uh, 
I'll, I'll pull the disabled card when I need to to get fast tracked and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, being being locked down, being unable to travel and to get out. It. I'll, I'll be honest. In in the beginning, as someone who is active and likes to get out, it had a bit of an effect on me. But again figured it out you know i got my hand bike put it on a turbo trainer in my garage get my cardio workout in i can put my little legs on and uh, we live in a cody sack so i can strap on uh, put some straps on and, and drag the kids around in the street for a bit of strength and conditioning you know work out that way and then as the restrictions eased a little bit back last year we were just venturing out to quiet secluded locations you know, Dartmoor, beaches, you're getting some fresh air, some exercise with the kids and stuff like that. Excellent. But going back to the business side of things, you got a brand called, and I, oh, sorry, I jumped ahead. You've got this film coming out, and honestly, I can't wait for that to come out. Uh, and, and your book, Man Down, I believe it's called, Man Down? It, yeah, it is. Yeah, I've read that. It's fantastic as well. It covers a whole story. So if anybody's watching and wants a copy, contact Mark. And uh, you got this brand, No Limbits. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> so uh, what I thought I was, I thought I was being clever with that. So the B was supposed to be silent. So it was supposed to be No Limits, but spell L-I-M-B because obviously your arm and your legs are limbs. But everyone started calling it No Limbits. And I was like, I don't know what that means. That's not a word. Um, so I, I ended up dropping the B off it. So it's now just, you know, spelt the regular way, but No Limits was, it started off as a, a hashtag on social media. So when I was putting out Instagram posts, Twitter posts that I thought could be a value to people, I would hashtag it No Limits, you know, because that's that's my mindset. And then, you know, I don't know if you know how it works with social media and hashtags, but it then puts it onto a, a separate group full of similar content. So I thought I could reach people in that way and try and spread a positive message. Then a bunch of the things that I was saying, you know, specifically the the shorter quotes and stuff, people started retweeting them and, and saying that, you know, it was helping them change their mindset. So I decided to start putting on hoodies and, and t-shirts and all that kind of stuff and, and made a, a very small mo- motivational merchandise clothing line. I tested a little bit over Christmas actually with children's clothing because I just thought, well, wouldn't it be great if children you know, grew up and their favorite t-shirt had something empowering written on it and motivating that their parents had bought them that from an early age changed their mindset. Because through my experience right now with three children, particularly my eldest one, there's so much negativity out there on, on social media that they grow up and they see all this negativity at the minute on Instagram and everything. And, and that, it molds you. It molds you and, and your way of thinking from a young age. So I thought, right, I'm going to fight against it and I'm going to put some empowering stuff out there on T-shirts and hoodies for kids where they can go out and play with their friends. And so we, we tested a little bit over Christmas. It was very popular. So we're looking to grow that this year. And then, you know, who knows, branch out into, you know, the usual stuff, coffee mugs and, and notepads and wherever. I just feel like wherever you can have these positive messages as much as possible subconsciously you know you absorb it and and you start to live that way and it changes your mindset so no limits is all about that it's about changing people's mindsets and letting them know that you know there are no limits you can you can do whatever you want to do you've just got to think about it and attack it in the right kind of way yeah and we're definitely in need of a lot more positivity in the world of today Mm. Mm. Right. So with right. so much that you have achieved in um, in twenty since twenty oh seven, what would be your goals moving forward? You've achieved so much. Is there anything else that you want to achieve? You can achieve. You should yeah, achieve. Th- do you know what? Th- there's tons, and uh, I, I can't remember if we talked about this on air or if we talked about this off air. But this year, um, I've just I've just left my job. I've spent the last ten years since I was medically discharged from the Marines working for the Royal Marines charity and I've loved it it's been brilliant I've got to travel the world I've got to help out members of the Royal Marines family I've got to learn so much but at the I'm going to say I did it at the expense I didn't do it at the expense at all but it meant that my capacity was reduced and I couldn't focus on my businesses you know I want to write more books I want to do the film I'd like to make more documentaries and you know just get 
content out there to the masses. I really would love to create a coaching program. You know, I want to write a book about everything that I've learned in 37 years as a Royal Marine, as a an athlete, a para athlete, as a, a bodyguard, as a dad, as as a husband, and put all these practical tools into a book, which I can then turn into a, a coaching program, which people can hopefully follow. So I'd love to do that. But I'm actually really focusing now on business because what I want to do, as well as be massively successful and have a huge house and a swimming pool and all that great stuff that comes with financial business success, I want to show people that, again, there there are no limits. And just because I've got three limbs missing, it doesn't mean I can't be successful in that area because of technology and being resourceful and using the resources that I have at my disposal to create and perpetuate that success. You know, you, you look now and I, and I see my, my youngest children watching, you know, and I'm, I'm not a big fan of a lot of it, but watching stuff on YouTube. And uh, I, I watched my boy the other day and he was watching a guy my age, you know, f- mid to late 30s, playing hide and seek on YouTube. And, and I was intrigued, so I watched it. And uh, this guy's running through this house and it's like a mansion. And he ran through his garage and he had like two Lamborghinis in there. And I'm like, what does this guy do for a living, Mason? And he said, he just makes videos on YouTube. And so I did a bit of research and, and p- people are making serious money using technology, you know, and, and being digital and having a digital presence. So I thought, well, why can't I do that? You know, I can't be out there physically all the time, you know, running around, standing on stages, you know, it, it's exhausting and it, it takes it out of you. But I can capitalize on a digital audience and try and create some level of success there. And if I can do that, and this this guy and these guys on YouTube can do that, then why can't everyone do that? You know, everyone can figure it out. And you can, uh, I'm waffling now, but I get quite passionate about this. You know, you can just download an app on your phone and sell stuff on eBay or one of these, I think it was called Vinted I saw the other day, where you sell your used clothes that you don't have anymore. You can create businesses in a, in a heartbeat, you know, online. Um and create your own business success that way, whatever that looks like for you. So it's exciting. And I want to be able to create a level of success for myself where I can say to other people, look, you know, there really aren't any excuses. You know, I've got one hand, you know, four fingers, one thumb, and I've managed to do this. So you can do that too. It's a great story. It's a great yeah. inspiration. You nailed it mm-hmm. on that. That's, that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it, it, like using the tools that are available today, uh, that weren't available in our day, if you like, but they're available today, and there's so many people using them and, and making money, so monetizing what you do. But you know, on the platform that you've had for these years since uh, 2007 up to now, that's such a robust platform for you to just grow in so many areas that you've identified there. And and uh, yeah, mm-hmm. we wish you every success on that. Um, Thank you. Certainly. So what? I just got one quick question before we move on to the next larger question. Um, out of all the people you've met in this stage of uh, since 2007, who's the most in- inspiring person uh, that, you know, that you've met? God, that's a hard question to answer because there, there's so many in, in different areas. You know, I've met people that 99% of the planet I've never heard of through things like the Invictus Games, other athletes that have inspired me and then as you know you know I've, I've got to meet Prince Harry and, and A-list actors and celebrities who in their own fields are extremely inspiring you know I, I think I've had the great fortune of I, I would say 95% of the people that I've met in my life I've been great people you know I've kind of managed to avoid the, the nasty ones there's been a couple but you know generally I've for some reason gravitated towards the the genuinely good hard work and humble ones in in whatever area it is that they're they're a professional in so i've been quite lucky but i'm sorry i've I've kind of dodged that question but i can't really pinpoint one person specifically they, they've all been great yeah and that, that's a very good answer because it's about the team around you and surrounding yourself by like-minded positive people uh, and, mm-hmm. and getting aligned. I think I remember one of your posts about you've got to get rid of the negativity in your life. And if there's negativity people in your life, then you've got to remove them and, and think positive. I think that was a, a post a long time ago, actually. 
morale vampires. Yeah, That's what yeah. I call them. The ones that, that suck the happiness out of you. That's it, yeah. yeah. Oh, talking about vampires then, very quickly, what do you do on Halloween? Oh, did you see that video? <laughs> okay, so th- there's various things that I've done over the years. So when I when I take my prosthetics off and I have nothing on, well, I have clothes on, but I have no prosthetics on, I'm only four foot two inches tall, I think. So I can fit in some very compact spaces. So I've got in a, a small box before that I've put on the front door where a child would never imagine a, a, an adult could fit in. And we've written free sweets on the box. And when they've come to get the free sweets, I've burst out the box and traumatized them. And then this year just gone, I, I found this mask, like a zombie mask that covered my entire head. And I put it on and I, again, with no prosthetics on, crawled onto my front lawn, face down, surrounded by lollipops and bags of sweets. And I could see, there was eye holes cutting the mask, so I could see when the kids were coming and none of them really knew what they were looking at because they they'd come they were kids that came from out of the neighborhood and they just saw a body lying on the floor with no legs and one arm missing face down with a zombie mask on they didn't know whether it was a doll or a human and as they got closer i just you know woke up and just ran towards them and scared the life out of them so um yeah you, you've got to learn to have a little bit of fun with this too you know uh, and, and if you guys, if you can't actually picture that in your mind, go to his YouTube channel. It's on there, and it's it's fantastic. It's really good, hilarious, great. So, what's yeah. the message Mark Onwood would tell to everyone watching now to inspire and get over the challenges of today and tomorrow? I think you've just got to consciously look at the situation you're facing, whatever it is, whether it's you know a COVID lockdown loss of a job you know whatever it may be look at it and then think okay what's good about this where where can i focus my attention when 99% of the planet aren't and how can i make that a positive experience so i mean this is probably the most commonly said thing about covid and, and lockdown that i've heard uh, since it started is that people are getting to spend lots more time with their families you know, before you'd be out and about working nine till five or however long, traveling, you know, busy, 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 busy all the time. Whereas now we're restricted a little bit more. So we can spend more time with our, our kids and, and our wives and husbands and, and just do more things as a family. Take, you know, I've never used my back garden in my house so much. Normally I wouldn't ever go in there, but now, you know, we can get out in the back garden where it's safe and when the weather's a bit better, just enjoy ourselves, you know, and, and take that positive from this negative. Yeah, and, and that's, that's great. So um, we just want to thank you, Mark, for sharing that, that amazing inspirational journey. You, you know, from your 2007 incident, which was a life-changing incident, literally, you, you actually died, you came back to life, then all the aspects of rehabilitation, which we've only touched on, um, and sharing that and, and actually being an inspiration. I hope the people watching this have got out the negativity into positivity is what life's about. And Mark, mm-hmm. you're an absolute star and demonstration of how that is. And you continue to be so um, with the lessons you shared you. and your visions and your goals, what you want to do. Um, one last thing, is there any other word of encouragement to the audience before we wrap up? I would just say specifically with COVID and a lockdown and everything like that, you know, like anything, it's, it, it doesn't last forever. And it, it's always darkest before the dawn, you know. So it is a struggle. It, it is rough. We are all in it together. You know, some have got it a lot worse than others. I feel very fortunate. But it, it will end. Things will go back to normal. Life will go back to some degree of normality of how it was before and when it does I think it would be very beneficial if people just took five minutes to appreciate that and to realize maybe maybe I took some of this stuff for granted before and live a little bit differently with a bit of a different mindset 
Yeah, very much. So I think we've all taken life very much for granted with the changes that happen. So it's a very clear mm. message there. And again, I, I think one of the other things we've got to take away for this is be prepared for the next one because we don't know what's coming around the corner uh, and the resilience and the, the mindset of what you've demonstrated in, in being adaptable and agile and everything else you've shared is, is what we need to be able to uh, take to ourselves as well. Uh, so thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you once again, Mark. As we wrap up the session, don't forget to click on and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook and Instagram. Goodbye. Till next time. Goodbye. Thank you very much, Mark. See you soon. See you guys. Thank you.